Okay, uh, good afternoon. Um, very fortunate to have a VIP guest today with us uh, after practice, uh, Cooper Roberts, um, young man that was injured in the Highland Park shooting last, uh, last year, um, and his family, uh, his mother Keely, uh, dad Jason, and his twin brother Luke were out there. And uh, it was great for him to meet uh, Justin Fields, myself, and uh, Ryan Poles at the end. Uh, the young man loves, Cooper loves the beach, and we gave him a uh, beach buggy uh, to get around in there. So he's uh, real excited about using that pretty soon. But uh, um, again, I want to thank the players uh, for coming uh, into this voluntary time. Uh, we got great attendance. Uh, guys been uh, involved, engaged in the meetings. Uh, we had a little bit shorter practice today because we had practice, you know, all three days in a row. So we wanted to shorten it down a little bit by about 20 minutes um, today. Been getting great situational work. Uh, during that time. Uh, yesterday, we really focused on a lot of third downs. Today was more normal downs, some red zone, and also to finish up with a two-minute into half. So that's been great. Uh, we've got several of those so far uh, this year uh, in the off season. So we're pumped about that. Uh, with that, I open to questions. Yeah. Clarify what the status is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this time of year, I'm not really going to talk about the, it, the injuries, but sometimes you get some soft tissue stuff, and there's no reason to uh, risk anything at this time. So, you know, he just felt something, and did, like a lot of guys have, uh, we'll let him sit out for the day and uh, feel where they're going from there. So that's what we do. And then when Nate Davis, is his absence injury-related in relation to what he experienced last year? Or? Yeah, just uh, he's just not here. I mean, that's all I can really comment on. Um, like last week, Justin said when we asked him about the absences, he wants the young guys, he wants the new guys here to learn the offense. And what Cody was just saying, he's played in this offense before. Is there, does that give a kind of soft? Referring blow? to who? Referring to Nate Davis. Okay. Like, is there any, does that soften the blow of him not being here, just knowing that he is a veteran, he has played in a similar offense? Um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we certainly feel a little bit more comfortable because he has been in the system. And uh, he knows the zone scheme and the down schemes and uh, really similar in terms of the line coaching is very similar to that. Uh, but, uh, again, we, we would like everybody here. Uh, we think it's invaluable for guys to be here. We'll coach the guys that are here. Cody, you were just saying how fortunate he feels to be here. What does his better voice mean to that offensive line and also his versatility? Just yeah, Co Cody, first of all, is just a great human being. I mean, he's just a great young man and a great family guy. Uh, so we love having him around. He's always positive, always energetic. Uh, he brings it every day to practice, which is great for the young guys to see that. Uh, he's a true professional. Um, so ups or downs, highs or lows, he's always going to be the same guy in the building every single day. Um, so we really uh, appreciate that from him. Um, and the guys gravitate towards him because of his leadership and his uh, years of experience he's had playing multiple positions. So um, to me, he's great for Braxton, you know, great for Darnell. He's great for all those young guys. Man, has Jalen Jones, uh, Jalen Johnson, I'm sorry, told you whether he'll be back this week? He has not. He has not. So we're, well, hopefully he'll be here. Uh, we know he'll be here probably for mandatory minicamp, uh, hopefully next week, uh, potentially. So we'll see. Coach, with, Alan, Alan's, oh, go ahead. But with Justin in the running game, like you guys and he have both said, you don't want him rushing for 1,000 yards next year. But you probably want someone to. So how can you guys kind of fill in and still be a strong running team without Justin carrying so much of that? Yeah, I mean, it's just about working their schemes, you know. I think, uh, you know, having our, our halfbacks that we have, we feel confident about those guys. Uh, we feel good about our offensive line, you know, what we've done there in terms of the run blocking. Certainly we, we, we certainly value Simo and the way he, uh, you know, schemes it up every single week, you know, with, uh, and changes it up the way he does. Uh, but uh, we certainly feel good about it. And uh, we talked about it last year with, with Justin in terms of the run game, you know, run it when we need it, you know, and, and when we're down in the red zone, third down, we might need it at that point, you know, during those critical situations of the game. So uh, that's what he's going to do. Coach Allen was saying earlier that from his vantage point, a defensive coordinator, uh, he sees Justin processing faster and better accuracy. How do you see that in the How does that come up? Does it show up? on film after practice or do you, is it detectable when you're out there? Yeah, I think I think the latter. I think it is detectable uh, when you're out there. Um, you can see him going through his reads quicker, uh, know, uh, reading the coverages on the snap, and uh, processing where to go with the football. And again, it's been working with his footwork, um, you know, and his his release. And he's been doing a great job with all those things. And uh, we're excited where he is right now. Is some of that to be expected in year two? And if 
if so, how do you measure kind of what's above and beyond just natural progression that he, that he knows this stuff? Yeah, I think some of it is expected just from the experience of last year. But I would say this, that uh, no one's worked harder than him in this offseason. Um, starting in February, you know, he's been was working on his own, studying uh, different quarterbacks and really understanding of what he needed to improve on, you know, given from the coaches, from Janoko and Luke and myself, uh, to be able to really take that next step. And he's worked his tail off since that point. Who do you study? Well, you have to ask him. <laughs> Matt, uh, Kyler Gordon had, I guess, what some might say is a typical rookie year. Is it too early to see a difference? I mean, a real difference, something that you know is going to be better this year? Or is it, does it take pads and yeah, I think it's the, the process. Has to, you have to go through the process of it, but you can certainly see his confidence uh, growing um, in the position. Um, you know, that nickel position is a, is a hard position. You do a lot of different things in there, uh, a lot of different techniques. Uh, things happen fast in there. You have to fit the run. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you have to do in there as a football player, and uh, we're fortunate to have him in there. Is there something that he, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Is there something that he didn't do last year in particular that you really need him to do this year? Uh, just consistency. You know, the rookies are just being consistent. You know, him and Brisker and all those guys, you know, were really good in spots. Um, but they also need to be more consistent. And that will happen in year two. What, what struck you about Herbert and Kevin when he did have the lead back opportunity last year? What he brought to the table? Yeah, just uh, his ability to hit the home run. You know, he can really do a great job of hitting the home run. Uh, he's got great uh, vision. Uh, he's got great cutback ability. He can take the ball outside and bounce it outside. But he has really good. he's really good at cutting it back. Uh, when it's there, and uh, we're excited where he is. What are your expectations for Travis Gibson in this next stretch of his his career? And yeah, I would just say keep competing. You know, we brought some guys in. You know, we might bring in some other guys. Uh, you know, we obviously brought some D tackles in and all that. So we'll we'll find out where the green rush is. You know, our, our pass rush team. You know, in the passing situations, um, we'll put our best four out there, and we'll probably have two more guys that will rotate in that rush group. Uh, but uh, it's just all about competition now. What is the benefit of building a defensive line from the inside out versus like the outside in? Yeah, I mean, obviously you'd like all four to be able to do, you know, push it both sides, you know, inside and then both outside. You know, that would be, you know, some of the elite pass rush groups that are in the NFL right now. Um, and we're building towards that. And we certainly feel great about where our guys are right now. But uh, from answer your question from building from the inside out, it's shorter distance to the quarterback. Uh, the quarterbacks feel that uh, right away. Um, there's been some great ones over the years that have been inside that have definitely affected the quarterback. Um, and then in the run game, you know, the run game is huge, you know, because if you get cut out on the inside, that, that creates big holes in the middle of your defense. How limiting is it when your pass rush is struggling during the course of the year? You know, we saw it last year. You tried different stuff, but when they're not getting home, how does that just change kind of what you are able to do across the board, you know, in the defensive back and the linebacker? Well, I mean, I would say that there's been years that, you know, back when I was the defensive coordinator where you would, you know, send more pressure. You would blitz guys that are second-level pressure players, uh, be it linebacker, safety, um, you know, that type of thing. Uh, we've certainly done that and got a handful of sacks out of those guys. You know, we've gotten 10 sacks out of that group or more than that. So um, that could be something that we potentially do. Uh, but you'd like to generate it from the front four. That way you can have all seven in coverage. Um, and you can do more variation with your coverage that way, not opening holes for the for the offense. But certainly, you got to pick a, pick your poison and pick your time when you want to do that. Jason was talking about you know you don't want Justin to run for a thousand yards. In, in theory, you don't want a safety leading the team in sacks either. Right? Uh, that would be a correct statement. <laughs> yeah. Well, we often talk about how the defensive line is able to help the linebackers be their best selves. Can you flip that around and talk about how your strong linebacker group could essentially help the defensive line, especially the D tackles? Not so much in like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great to have two linebackers in there that have really a good experience, you know, and then Sanborn being the other guy that's got, you know, that rookie year under his belt. Um, you know, it's certainly comforting for those young guys, you know, for the young defensive linemen, but uh, tackles. Uh, but having Justin in there, having Billings in there, having some experience in there ahead of those guys right now and having those guys compete um, and having all four of them go at it, you know, who's going to be on the, the rush group, who's going to be, st you know, rotating, who's going to be getting the reps. So I think it's going to be great with the competition in there. Andrew Hightower went to it. As you look at the pass rushing options, are you interested in any of the free agents that are out there, some veteran guys out there? Yeah, we're interested in a lot of free agents. You know, we're interested in a lot of guys at all positions right now. So we're, we're just excited about being able to, uh, you know, look at those guys and potentially add as we go through camp and, you know, getting closer to the season. Yeah. What kind of opportunity is that for him, and how much do you encourage your assistants to pursue options like that? 
Yeah, I think it's great. You know, uh, HT is a, is a, is the first of all another, uh, another wonderful guy. You know, it's just a great human being, and he's he works well with the players. He's a great communicator. Uh, he's a great teacher. And the one thing that that the the owners and the people that hire him don't see is they don't see him in the meeting room, and that's where he's special. I mean, he lights the room up. I mean, he's grabs all their attention, and he makes sure everybody's on the same page. And they don't get to see him coaching on the grass. You know, because he's, he's an expert at that. And uh, those two things I don't get to see. And a lot of times when you're in that interview process, you know, when you're going through and you're meeting with the, uh, the board members or whoever, the owners, it's a little bit different because the, the, it's just uh, the crowd's a little bit different than actually working with your football team. You know, so you got to be able to make sure you understand the difference of that as you go through the interview process. And he does, and he will. Yeah, it's just a little different, you know. It's just uh, you know when you're working with the player hand in hand, you know you want to you want to speak the language, you know. So a lot of times the X and O when you're diving in deep into the X and O part of it, um, that's for the players, you know. The overarching theme of the philosophy, the culture you want to build for your football team, and what you want to bring to the table in terms of the whole organization is really in that in that uh, vein right there.